man. Um, also, the Toronto Blue Jays, they've actually found a home now. They, they was flirted. Yes. They might play in Baltimore. They might play in Pittsburgh, but they're playing in Buffalo. Mm-hmm. And that's actually not too far from their home. It's be cold up there, though. Come, <laughs> we get to, to the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but listen, they needed a home, and they got one now. So, so it's pretty good. But it, listen, it's definitely going to be cold up there. They, they got to get used to it. Well, I mean, they, 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 they're they from Toronto. Uh, the difference is, I believe this is an outdoor stadium. Um, so those well, game, yeah. those games in September, <laughs> those games in September and possibly October, if they make the playoffs, yeah. whew, those would be tough. It's going to be a little nippy. <laughs> those would be very, very tough, man. Listen, anyway, let's... The is going through the Bronx anyway, so it's all good. I, uh, I, I do agree to a certain extent. I, I do agree. Um <laughs> And, and and let's transition to NFL. Um, big news broke yesterday, bro. Um, I know you're a Giant fan, but this is um, – I don't even – I don't really consider them, you guys, your, your in-state rival. I don't think they're a rival. I just think it's more about you guys share a home, really. <laughs> um, the New York Jets, they've been in the headlines all offseason for all the wrong reasons. Um, Jamal Adams wanted to be traded. Um Le'Veon Bell doesn't seem too thrilled about Adam Gase. Then Jamal Adams released some comments about Adam Gase stating he isn't the right leader for the Jets. He doesn't connect with everyone in the building. And within 24 hours, Jamal Adams gets traded to the Seattle Seahawks along with a a fourth-round pick. Uh, In return, the Jets get two first-round picks and a third-round pick along with Bradley McDougal, who's also a safety um, and just for clarification, the picks that the Jets are getting are a first and a third round pick in the 2021 draft, which is next year. And then they also get the 2022 first round pick from the Seahawks. What are your thoughts on a trade? Because Jamal Adams is one of the best safeties, if not the best safety in all of football. Yeah, um, I mean, so I'm not a Jets fan. So from that standpoint, it doesn't it didn't bother me that they traded him. Um, I'm happy that they did get a decent haul in return because he is, you know, maybe top three safety in the league. Um, but what you also may have done is put the Seahawks in the Super Bowl uh, with this one because now that defense is crazy. I, I tell you one thing that the NFC West just got a lot more interesting um, because what he's going to be able to do for that team, it's just it's, it's a whole different culture. And he's going to go in there, and he wants to be there. Um, he's on a team where they actually do have a legitimate chance of getting to a Super Bowl and winning a Super Bowl. You have a, a, a Super Bowl MVP quarterback leading the team and, and, and Russell Wilson, who's always been good at making things happen with, 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 with less help, you know what I'm saying, and just in, in a really good defense. So now we're going to get back to that really uh, good defense. So, you know, if those guys stay healthy, um, I think there's a good chance we see San Fran in Seattle in the NFC Championship game. Uh, and, and, and I kind of like the, the, the Seahawks' odds in that game um, just because, I mean, the defenses, you know, they're both really good defenses. They're both going to be top defenses in the league. But when you go on the offensive side of the football, Russell Wilson is amazing. And I don't even think that he gets the credit that he really should um, as far as being one of the top quarterbacks in this league. But now you add in, in one of the top safeties to that, to that defense, he's going to have a, a lot more shortened fields uh, on offensive end, so that's going to make things even easier for those guys. So, you know, I love it for the Seahawks. He wanted to leave. I love it for the Jets. They, they, like you said, they got, they got a, um, a nice little hole in return. They got a safety back. They got a first and a third. And next year's draft, I love it. Um, and 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 you know what? It's not like it's it's someone on the offensive end, so it, it would it, it doesn't hurt Sam Darnold and his development. Or you know, if hopefully he continues to to improve, um, he doesn't get mono this year again, or you know anything like that. Um, but you know what I'm saying. So I think I think it worked out. I think the trade was great for both sides. Yeah, I think um, for the Jets, it's it's an amazing move to get that amount of value um, for Jamal Adams when everyone knew he didn't want to be there. Everyone had heard him um, either wanting a new contract or get me out of here. So to be able to get two firsts and a third, I think is, is great value, along with Bradley McDougal, who's going to be the starting safety for the Jets because he was the starting yeah. safety for the Seahawks. 
So you were yep. able to get his replacement while getting three picks. Is Bradley McDougal Jamal Adams? No, of course not. Jamal he's, Adams again. Right, but he's a solid player along with those picks that you get. So from that standpoint, I love it. And as, as, you, as you made the point, Jamal Adams on the defense side of the ball is great. He impacts the game, but he doesn't help the development of your quarterback. And now you have more assets to go out there and get potential receivers, running back, O-line help to continue the development of Sam Darnold. On the flip side, for the Seahawks, this trade is solely about the 49ers. This trade is solely about closing that gap, which mm -hmm. I think was very minimal to begin with because they split last year. Um, yeah. You know, each team winning one game against each other. Seahawks were a playoff team, but they got bumped in the second round. They didn't get an opportunity to, to potentially face the 49ers in an NFC championship game. And they were so, banged up. The, the, the running game was completely depleted. Right, right. And so for the Seahawks, this is about closing the gap with the 49ers because we all know that San Francisco, for as good as they run the ball and as much as they like to run the ball, their offense is really predicated on one thing, and that's getting George Kittle the ball. And now with a guy like Jamal Adams, Jamal Adams can neutralize Kittle similar to the way that Tyron Matthew was used in the Super Bowl by Kansas City to neutralize Kittle, play him near the box, be able to play him in coverage, but also help out in the run and kind of neutralize his impact on the game. So Jamal Adams can do all those things and then some, and he's going to help Seattle's uh, defense, the team as a whole. My only question for Seattle is now they've got to figure out, are they going to bring back Clowney? Because he has not agreed to any contract yet. They've been trying to re-sign him. If you get him, it does make your defense even scarier because we know the impact that he can have when he's healthy, along with Bobby Wagner, along with Jamal Adams, along with Quandre Diggs, who they traded for last year, who also plays in the secondary. They've got a really good defensive unit, but that offensive line isn't the greatest. That running game, as you mentioned, was really banged up last year, and they're very young at wide receiver. So Russell Wilson, again, is going to be asked to shoulder the load on offense and carry those guys to a point that most other quarterbacks couldn't do. And if this works out, yes, they're a Super Bowl contender. But if it doesn't work out, if their running game is hurt, if their old line is banged up, if Russell Wilson is constantly running around trying to make plays, we're going to look back at this trade and we're going to be like, this is the trade that handcuffed them because they gave away so many assets to be able to bring in Jamal Adams. Let's not forget, Jamal Adams still wants that new deal. So you're yeah. going to have to lock him up as well. Now, yeah. you may get away with not signing him this season because he's still on his rookie deal, and you may be able to use that cushion to be able to bring back uh, Clowney right now. But at some point over the next 12 months, Jamal Adams is going to want a new contract. So you yeah. gave up two first, a third, and possibly a $100 million contract for Jamal Adams. Keep in mind, I know they don't play the same position, but I just want to use this as perspective. When the 49ers traded DeForest Buckner to the Colts, the Colts only had to give up one first round pick and DeForest Buckner still ended up getting his money from the Colts. The Seahawks are giving up three high quality picks and possibly a hundred million dollars. It has to work out. It absolutely has to work out for Seattle. If not, this will be the trade we look back on and say, this is what handcuffed them from being able to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. I see. So the fact that they're going to have to sign uh, Jamal Adams to a new contract, be it this year or next year, is the reason why I don't think that Jadavion Clowney gets uh, signed um, back with the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Because I think they're going to look at that and they're not going to want to have both of those contracts on on the um, on on the roster because Jadavion Clowney is he's not taking off actually ten million to come back to Seattle, especially knowing that you about to give Jamal Adams that big money. So I, I doubt he's gonna do that, um, you know. And I, and I did hear a little, little speculations, little, 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 little chirpings out of Michael Thomas, who seems to think that Jadavion Clowney, Clowney will be coming to the Saints. So you know, we're gonna wait and see. It's been a little while. I'm I, like, I'm, I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised that he's been out there this long, because he's, you know, he, I mean, he beasted last season, but the injuries throughout his career have kind of been a hindrance. But I, I I'm. I'm really intrigued to figure out where he's going to end up at. I, I agree. Um, I've talked about it all off season. I thought he was one of the most intriguing free agents because we know when he's healthy, what he can do. His numbers didn't dictate that last year because he was hurt. Um, but when he was healthy in those two playoff games, he wrecked havoc and he showed what he could do. Um, I don't know if the Seahawks would be willing to bring him back on a one-year team-friendly deal 
and kind of say, hey, look, if it all works out, we'll renegotiate something after this season. I don't know um, we, if he's going to want to do that, though. Right, and that was going to be my next point. We haven't really heard from him either. Uh, the initial you know, rumblings were really that he was looking for a deal closer to $20 million per season. But was he looking for $20 million from any team, or was he looking for $20 million from a contender? You know, what is he prioritizing? Because I'm sure there's some bottom feeders who, who wouldn't mind paying him $20 million just to have him on the roster. Um, yeah. You know, but if, if he's looking to contend, then, of course, he can't be looking for $20 million. He's going to have to look for something that's more in the range of 10 to $12 million and come on board and, and just show out for a year. Um, New well, Orleans, he was already de- dropping down uh, they, to about 17, 18. So he did shave a little bit off, but I don't know yeah. if he'll drop down to twelve. That's 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 a stretch. Even uh, listen, even at even at seventeen, eighteen, I think that's way too high of a price tag for a guy who's often injured. Um, I agree with you. And but, you, but but your worth is what you was what you dictate your worth to be. No, no, I, I'm not knocking what he thinks his worth is. That you know, I, I can never question a man to say hey, this is what I deserve. However, what are you prioritizing? Are you prioritizing the money, or are you prioritizing an opportunity to win? Because if you get twenty million from one of these bad teams, exactly right. That's what I'm saying. You could you could technically go pay, play in Cincinnati for twenty million, you yeah. know. But are you going to be happy there? You know, um, <laughs> Ax and Damakasu when he took that big deal with the Dolphins, if he was happy there, you know, he got up out of there pretty quickly. He he was yeah. disgruntled. So Absolutely right, yep. You you could get that money, but you're probably not going to win. Now, if you want to win. And make a little decent piece of change because again, let's not act like ten to twelve million dollars a year is, is is chump change. You're still That's making right. good money. You could easily go to the New Orleans Saints. You could easily go to the Buffalo Bills and be a part of two teams that have winning aspirations, who are playoff teams, who could also enhance your profile because you're playing games that mean something. You rack up double digit sacks in Cincinnati, it means nothing because that team ain't gonna win but three or four games anyway. But you do that in New Orleans, you do that in Buffalo, now you're saying something. Yep, exactly. So yeah, You're absolutely right. You're we right. we got to see how, you know, I, I would love to see him land in a good spot because I think he still has a lot of talent and a lot of game left. Yeah. Oh, no, but, that, absolutely. He's right. young enough. So, you know, he's, he's not, he's doing 27, 28 right now. He's in his late 20s. He got a lot of game left. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, again, we, we got to monitor how, how it plays out for him. Um, yes, also, in regards, I'm sorry, say it again. 27. Uh, yeah, he got a lot of game left. He got time, um, yeah. Also, in regards to this Jamal Adams trade, there was a lo- another little snippet that came out of it as, as Le'Veon Bell kind of took a shot at him. Um, basically, to paraphrase, he said, you know, guys uh, kind of beg and, and, and petition for you to come to their team only for them to leave. Listen, uh, first and foremost, we know it's a business. All right. Uh, Jamal Adams wanted to get paid. And if the Jets weren't going to pay him, he was going to leave one way or another. So we know that. Secondly, Le'Veon Bell act like he went to the Jets for Jamal Adams. Le'Veon Bell went there because they paid him four years, 40 plus million dollars. All right. Th- th- you, you wasn't going there for Jamal Adams because y'all don't even play on the same side of the ball. Yeah. Now, he, granted, he may have pitched to him to come there and say, and say come there. But yeah, you know, you, you gotta you gotta ease up a, a, a little bit because it is football, and it's hard to get the money that you really deserve in football because you know teams team just you know I guess it's a combination of can't and just not wanting to to to, to give out these crazy long term deals, um, especially I mean not at the at the safety position, you know what I'm saying if, they, if we're talking about Sam Darnold. That that'd be a little bit different, you know, at the quarterback. But you know, what I'm saying, like you said, it's, it's a business at the end of the day. At the end of the day, and listen, man, he got to do his best for him. It's looking like they weren't, you know. And I didn't. I mean, two things was gonna happen. It, it was either gonna be after he made those comments about Adam Gates, it was either gonna be Adam Gates was gonna get fired, and they was gonna re re up on Jamal Adams' contract, or Jamal Adams was gonna get traded immediately. And that's what happened. We saw we saw that one happen, and that's it. And, and the irony in all this, right, is one had Pittsburgh offered Le'Veon Bell the same contract that the Jets had offered, he would have stayed in Pittsburgh. Yeah, let's would've. not get it twisted. Two, Le'Veon Bell held out a whole season to make sure he got his money. So it's cool for you to get your money, exactly. but Jamal can't get his. 
So he want if he wants to leave because he's they're not talking about paying him. You can't get mad at him for that. You you really right. can't. Because this is, time, this, this is peak contract. He may not get another contract of this magnitude. So he got to get it now. Um, again, Le'Veon did the same thing in Pittsburgh. Right? Yeah. He didn't want to be there. He let it be known, I don't want to be here if they're not going to sign me long term and give me the extension. And he yeah. left. I'm because, sure there's guys in Pittsburgh who probably felt like, damn, bro, I want. I, I thought I was going to play with you for another four or five years. The excuse is going to be, I got drafted by Pittsburgh. Nobody called me and asked me to come there. <laughs> Uh, Jamal Adams got drafted by the Jets. I mean, as he was. Dude, I'm saying when, when he, yeah, he's he's just mad because you know he came over and and he, and he didn't stay. But you know that's uh, that's that's, that's emotion. We ain't yeah. got time for emotions. So it's, it's all right. I mean, he'll get over it. Listen, ball out without him. Like you said, um, I think uh, Jamal Adams tweeted back. Okay, I see you week 14. Exactly. That's what it that was. You, that you was. Fill away. Yeah. Run, run, run for a buck thirty and two touchdowns. Right. When you when you see when you see the seal. Now, Bobby Wagner probably not going to let that happen. He, right. he might have something to say about that. Right, right. But, I'm sure. I'm I'm sure that the the Seahawks will will have their their eyes set on Le'Veon Bell for that game. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll see what happens week 14, as Jamal Adams pointed out. This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Real talk, we as real as you thought. 